It's like, why does, why does Instagram just get it? And like, doesn't Facebook own Instagram? Right, that's like, what I'm what saying. Like, I feel like it should connect. And I'm, <laughs> like, I, I don't, like, I don't, why do we have to use Zoom on Facebook, but we can just do it on Instagram? That makes no sense. Absolutely Crazy. no sense. I'm like, I, what do you guys do? <laughs> I have no earthly idea. Crazy. So I'm just going to simply, I'm redirecting people over here, and we'll just have to keep it pushing like that. Um, anywho all right so we all know that instagram loves to do the whole one hour thing so whenever the thing clocks out i will just restart it wherever we at um (laughs) cool okay so hi everyone who's joining uh we were having some technical difficulties because instagram or because facebook and zoom are not wanting to be friends right now but um this right now is my guitar gabby being a boss series my name is guitar gabby i've been playing guitar for uh, a long time and I've been recently working with Guitar Girl Magazine to bring you all what I call my Being a Boss series. Um, It's basically just talking about the real life experience, the behind the scenes experience of what it's like being a black woman in the music industry Um, and just letting you all into um, my personal journey of self-management with my band. And so I thought it was really important, especially during this time, to bring in some other amazing black women that are friends of mine in this industry that could talk to the experience of you know, us just being in the industry. So on right now, you all see is Jackie Vinson. Hey, Jackie. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> so I'm going to read your bio real quick because I thought it was really, I thought it was really good. Okay. okay. So that's with music from an early age. Singer songwriter Jackie Vinson immersed herself in its study, attending Berkeley College of Music to practice classical piano. However, it wasn't until she switched to the electric guitar that her long simmering passion for emotive life performance was realized. Abandoning the straight laced world of classical for the raw power of blues and soul, Vincent has since been tirelessly honing her skills into intoxicating out, um, all the <laughs> all of blues, I'm sorry, rock, R&B, and soul with deeply heartfelt lyrics. Having just released her latest studio album, Joy, Vincent is in the midst of her global Joy to the World tour which will see her playing shows all the way back to Alaska to Austria. So um, I see people in the comment section super excited to see Jackie. <laughs> yeah. I just want to yeah. jump on into it. Um, again, tell us your name, where you're from, and, and how long you've been playing. Well, my name's Jackie Vincent. I'm from Austin, Texas, and I've been playing for a little over nine years now. So come, closing in on a decade, which is kind of crazy. Once, right. it, once, once it gets to 10 years, it's not special anymore. You know? <laughs> right like oh you're just old then. <laughs> you know what I mean? so i'm like okay the glory days are i got i got one more year of glory days <laughs> right <laughs> people are just so, gonna expect things you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah what made you want to get into guitar what started you in guitar i was tired of playing the piano and i didn't see any future in it i just didn't i didn't have any creative ideas or spark or anything i just college kind of drifted me away from it and uh I just didn't know how to get back to a place where I could be creative to create something that was truly unique because I knew I had to be unique in some way. I had to stand out in some way or else, you know, it's just like swimming up river, you know? Yeah. Sure. So trying the trying to play the piano and like not be constantly compared to Alicia Keys, like just impossible. Yeah. It's <laughs> like impossible. It's like the biggest shadow. In the yeah. Shadows. Cause yeah. like, Cause like she also had a pretty big shadow too, like Aretha Franklin, and mm-hmm. you know, like a lot of really incredible soul singers that play the piano. And yeah. so, um, I just didn't know how I was going to be able to differentiate myself. I really didn't, I couldn't yeah. hear it, I couldn't see it, I didn't have any kind of spark for it. So, yeah. I was like, you know what, I'm going to switch to an instrument where I don't think I've ever seen anybody who looks like me playing it. And yeah. then I was like, thinking about that thought, I'm like, what instrument have I never seen someone who looks like me playing it so I thought violin nope no fuck no I've seen so many light-skinned chicks kick ass like on the street corner in New York City on the fucking violin like so yeah. many you know like, like they got that like sick hair doing they're just like in the subway you know I see they're just like killing it. I've seen that so many times you know I'm yeah. pretty sure like save the last dance with Julia Stiles pretty sure like her friend is a violin player right yeah and i think she's black so i'm like okay i have seen that yeah i had to think about it for like a whole day i'm like what have i really never seen 
And I was like sitting in the cafeteria at school and I was eating and this guy came in with his friends and he was talking about this guitar that he just bought and he pulls out the guitar and it's this bright red and white Fender Strat rosewood neck. And he's like, I finally saved the money. And I was just overhearing their conversation. And I, and he was just holding up this guitar and it was so shiny. And I was like, oh my God, I don't think I've ever seen anyone who looks like me playing the electric guitar. Holy shit. And then I thought about it for like a whole night. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and that was it. I was like, I'm going to try that. And then I just like fell in love with it. The rest is history. And then here's the crazy thing. Here we are nine years later and I've seen a trillion chicks who look like me that play the electric guitar. But at the time I really hadn't seen anyone. When I was 18 or sorry, 21, when I was 21, I hadn't seen anyone. Yeah. It was, first of all, I hadn't seen any women, period. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, anybody, women of any color or yeah. anything, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I was just like, it blew my mind nine years ago. I was like, whoa. Right. Yeah. Well, what I kind of want to segue and then come back to that. I know there's been like a lot of shit that's been going on right now in the world with regards to like Black Matter and a whole bunch of stuff all at once. How have you been coping with it mentally? I think we're all kind of good. some days we're good, some days we're not. I it's like a perfect Oreo Oreo of good to bad days. Like yeah. my good to bad days look like a, a row of Oreos. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Good day, bad day. Good day, bad day. Good day, bad day. If I had a good day yesterday, guaranteed to have a bad day tomorrow. Right. It's like yeah. like guaranteed to wake up to just like the worst freaking email I could have ever read at the worst time. Right. You know? Yeah. Like people I behaving the way that you expect them to behave even though you really hope that they change right and then a lot of times I feel like it never happens yeah and it's like already looking like it's not gonna happen I'm like really even after this time this was a big right. one and you're still yeah. gonna respond like that and you're still gonna act like that even yeah. now yeah Crazy. it's ridiculous I think that it's, um, it's opened up a lot of interesting conversation too. Like recently, with everything that's been happening, we've seen a lot of different companies and some companies who haven't said anything, but a lot of different companies who have come out in solidarity and in support of Black Lives Matter and the things that we're, um, I feel like we shouldn't, I shouldn't even have to say this, but asking to be treated like humans. Yeah. But um, it got me thinking a couple of weeks ago, about a week and a half ago, like where are all of my endorsement companies? Like, y'all been quiet. And then I started thinking, when Trayvon Martin happened, I didn't hear EMG, ESP, Ernie Ball. Any, I didn't hear anybody saying nothing. When Sandra Bland happened, I didn't hear anybody saying anything. So I was like, uh, I feel like if we are going to be in an industry that is taking um, advantage of and, and running up their revenue and their sales from the black dollar and from our culture, I feel like we should be hearing more of you all coming out solidarity than we are so <laughs> kind of opened up a pandora's box i feel it uh, did yeah and a lot of people have been feeling like that so it kind of got me thinking what 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 is the, i wonder what they think our experience during all of this is and then just in general being black women in the music industry i don't think a lot of people obviously because they're not black and they're not women i feel like it's hard to relate to the things that we have to deal with whether it's something really minor something but that's the reason why I started thinking. I know I'm not the only one that has gone through things like this. So I wanted to get your take on things that you might have experienced and just your overall um, journey of being a black woman in music. And I know we all get similar things that people write a whole book about. But what's been your experience so far um, being a black woman in music? Well, here's the thing. You you said it right when you said a Pandora's box. Uh, for me, my Pandora's box was not just like, okay, it was the quarantine. That's when I opened this box. So the quarantine made me realize how fragile the major music industry is. How now that they can't have their tours, it's like we're all in the same playing field. Like you do a stream, I do a stream. We're, we all have access to the exact same crowd. There's no gatekeepers for the internet. You know, you just, I mean, if, if you got to, you put a couple of hundred bucks into an ad and boom, you have, you have more, you have a bigger following. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we're all in the same place now. There's no like, oh, you can't come on my network. 
There's none of that anymore. So after seeing, and, and also seeing the silence of a lot of the celebrities for the, the major celebrities that we've been pouring our money into and our love into and putting, seeing on every billboard and being forced to listen to on every radio station, why aren't they doing live streams? It's like, we're all stuck inside. Where are they? Right? So like this whole thing, this dismantling of just like a system that I was a part of, I didn't realize until the George Floyd thing happened that the racist system that we don't want to be a part of is the exact same system that I left behind when I left behind the major industry. Because the major industry is nothing but racist and sexist and classist and elitist. And it is something born of a country that we want to change. The major music industry as it is and as it was and as it has always been was born in the same time period that the police system was born. I don't want to go back to that. I don't ever want to go back to that. And you know what? Now I don't have to because I have my own platform and I have my own ability to build my own platforms and I don't have to hope that my PD pilot gets cleared or whatever. I can just contact Netflix myself. You know what I'm saying? And so like, I just, I've had this unbelievable just like removal of all disillusion it's like i'm i was so disillusioned up until now i was i was thinking that a grammy award mattered when it doesn't the grammys are racist and sexist and have been for all like for like the entire time they've been around you can see a, a timeline of criticisms of artists criticizing them for being racist in the 90s in the 80s why the hell do i want a grammy award why do i want to be a part of that I don't want to be anywhere near those people. You know? I don't want to be complicit. I don't want to be silent. I don't want to be anywhere near those people. I turned down a gig um, from Paul Simon's management because I don't want to be near those people. I don't need them. And I don't need their energy. And I don't need to be a hypocrite to what I stand for. I stand for equity and equality and talent matter. I don't stand for any of that elitist bullshit. So I don't want to be a part of it. And I don't want those people to be in my life. And I damn sure don't want them to be anywhere near my art. You know? Sorry, I can't hear you very well. I can't hear you very well. There's some kind of... There we go. That's better. My computer was like, look, <laughs> that's way <laughs> um, I was, oh, so I was about to say, I know there, uh, especially for me, there are a lot of young girls. There are a lot of young black girls out there that look up to us, look to our platforms and um, they get inspired each and every day. So what's one thing that you would say to them? Because I mean, as you can imagine, I, I talk to my parents all the time about what the world was like for them being young black men and women in America and just to think about and to ex to think about the different experience that my parents had versus what I have now, I can only imagine what it's going to be like when the young girls who are now eight yeah. up to us. Like I can only imagine. So, what's one thing that you would give them to kind of help them push through and continue going forward? Um, just know that the the same conditioning that we've gotten in every other area. The mm -hmm. same rate of positioning that we've gotten in every other area is true of whatever industry you want to go into. Anything yeah. up until now was built in and a part of a racist system. That yeah. is what we've decided. And that's what we've seen. And that's what we have facts and data and history to back up and support. Right. And, and it poisons everything. It's not just the police system. It's, it's everything. Because everything was built in it. We have to yeah. start completely over. It's huge. This is yeah. a major shift. It's going to take us decades to figure out what we're going to do from here. This is a huge turning point. And we can all feel it. Yeah. And so what I'm suggesting that everybody does is like rethink all of your goals. All of your goals. Like let's say you want to be an actor, a singer, a politician. Let's say you want to be a restaurant owner. Let's say whatever you were working on before the quarantine hit. Mm -hmm. Rethink all of that. And then yeah. remove the system from it because we have the internet. You don't need yeah. the system anymore. You can build your own platform. You can yeah. go out into the community and you can do things the old fashioned way. You can yeah. start with a food truck and then get a brick and mortar. There's a million ways people have done it. People have lived outside of the system for a really long time. That's how we have 
big local communities and and like our own festivals like we we know how to live outside of the system mm -hmm. we, we have and now what i'm suggesting is that we turn the heat up we yeah. live even farther outside of the system than we already were yeah yeah and we and we weed out the people who behave like like they're in the system it's like look you shouldn't be in a position of power if you're going to try to turn this thing into some kind of like elitist thing like we yeah. we did that before that's, yeah that's old testament shit this is the new testament right we so, don't do that yeah. old testament shit anymore like right. like right. and weed it out in every branch of everything weed it out in your local community's music industry we weed it out in everything boycott it yep don't eat at the restaurant of the guy that that like into that heinous tweet like just like have oh, a zero yeah. tolerance I, zero I, tolerance policy that's yeah. all you have to do it's yeah. like no i don't want to be on your lineup i don't right. care that right. this famous person's on it too i don't care i'm not going to be your token black woman i'm not going to allow yeah. you to continue your lazy racist behavior yep. by using my name to say that you're not behaving that way exactly, exactly. i don't give a shit that like the biggest star in america is the headliner fuck your right, right. i don't want to live in that world no yeah. festival is worth it how am i going to step foot on on like a performance knowing i'm a hypocrite how am i even going to do that yeah that changes the whole atmosphere and the energy of what it is that you can bring to your performance like, yeah. it's yeah, not like, yeah like all of a sudden you think like you want to play the headline this festival you think that's your dream but that festival has been racist for the last 20 years yeah, you need to rethink your dream because you're going to go headline that festival, look out in the crowd and realize that you're contributing to this mess. Yeah. Fact. It's like it's, it's like everything that I thought that I wanted has been ruined. Like yeah. and, and just completely. Uh, now all I want is yeah. to share my art and be supported financially for it. Yeah. And there are so many ways to do that that don't involve Grammy Awards and mm -hmm. headlining festivals. There's a, a lot of people do it i know a ton of people who like literally like play instruments just for a living they're in like five bands and they just play for a living yeah that's, like that's what they do yeah <laughs> like there's so many ways to like make a really great living in this career and you don't need that system you don't need all of that bullshit yeah. i mean drake said it actually a few years ago as his grammy speech he was like y'all don't need this yeah he literally said it <laughs> Like, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Drake, but he literally said that to his credit. He said that he's like, y'all don't need this. Yeah. That's, and like, that's, that's been, so you asked what's been my reaction. That's been the Pandora's box that I've been just unpacking yeah. for like three months, just like sucking all the venom. We're talking about 20 years of dreams that I've had. Yeah. I, I really want to play the Super Bowl halftime show. Uh -huh. 2020 Jackie is like, I don't want NFL in my name, even on the same screen. Right. I don't want to be a part of that enterprise at all. That, right. that, ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I'll keep it. Like, no. Even if they asked me, I'd be like, fuck. Mm, oh. no, I'm serious. Yeah. I would tell them that. Yeah, that's facts. So I definitely think that there's a lot about to change. And I feel like um, we're in an era right now where Black women are, one, first and foremost, getting the props that we have always deserved because we're always behind the scenes doing everything for everyone, including ourselves and 30 other thousand people. And so this is the age of black women. Like this is our time. We're not with the bullshit no more. And then just as a culture of black people, a community of black people, I really feel like we're at that, that point now where we're like, look, shit's about to change. Not up for debate, not up for discussion. It is what it exactly. is. The shit, then cool. If you're not, go ahead and set the side because you're not going to stop me. So Yeah, it's like, you're not going to stop me. I, I, there's, I, you're not yeah. I, i've seen too much and yeah. too much. yeah yeah it's not me <laughs> well this i'm very much excited y'all we have um there's there's so much happening right now i am uh live on the guitar girl magazine facebook on my laptop and then live on instagram we have some technical difficulties but we here for right now so if you're on the facebook live on the guitar girl magazine page head over to guitar uh at guitar gabby and you can join the live right now um, thank you, Jackie, for hanging out with me for a little bit. For sure. Her homegirl Soleil is about to jump on, and she is based out of New York. Um, but if you don't already, make sure you're following Jackie Vincent. I'm pretty sure everyone in the world follows you at this point, because <laughs> they don't, you have a problem. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you so much for your positivity. and No problem. Also, yeah. just power the people, you guys. We got this. You don't, we yes, don't need absolutely. that. We don't need that. Exactly. Yeah. I'll see y'all later. Thank you so much. All right. See ya. Bye.
All right, so. All right, Soleil, where are you? 